This is Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three, the top three things on our mind here at Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets for the week of December 16th, 2019. The weekly top three is a regular segment on The Michael Duke Show. The show broadcasts on Facebook Live and via streaming audio from the show's website weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. I join Michael on Tuesdays from 6.20 to 7 a.m. for a discussion between the two of us about our three issues. We post the podcast of our discussion following the show on the Alaska for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud pages, and now on the Alaska for Sustainable Budgets website, as well as the efforts page on national blog site medium.com. You can find past episodes of the weekly top three also at the same locations. Keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts, during the week, you also can follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaska for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and through our posts on Twitter. This week, our top three issues focus entirely on the governor's budget. In the first segment, we talk about the challenges faced in dealing with the FY20 supplemental and FY21 budgets. In the second, we take up the 10-year plan to discuss what lies beyond. The short version, we have hit the wall. There is no cavalry coming over the hill to save the state from taxes. The only question is who will pay them. And now, let's join Michael. Well, let's talk about our Christmas gift from the governor today, which, of course, is the budget. Um, uh, you know, your initial impressions before we jump into your, your number one here, I mean, just initial you know, 60-second thumbnail impression uh, of, uh, of of what happened here last Wednesday. This is the year we hit the wall. Uh, you know, we've been talking about this since 2013, 2012, 2010, when you could start seeing the wall forming out there. Um, the spending levels were getting up. Revenues weren't going to keep up with it. You could sort of see it off in the distance. But this is the year we finally, finally hit the wall. Um, and... And, and when you look at the 10 year plan, there's no there's there's no cavalry coming over the hill. There's no oil price cavalry. There's no production cavalry. Um, there's there, <laughs> we're, we're Custer at Little Bighorn and um, and and we've been surrounded and um, it's uh, we've hit the wall. Well, that's it. There's just there is no there's no more further. You can't back up any farther than we already have. So. All right. Well, that's a good one. Well, let's talk about number one, the immediate issue, um, addressing the supplemental uh, for FY20 and the fiscal year 21 budget itself uh, with the governor taking a new tact. What, uh, you know, what's number one here? Well, the the governor's got a huge, I mean, the governor and the legislature both, the state as a whole, let me, let me try it that way. The state as a whole has got a huge immediate issue. I, 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 I'm, I like to focus on the 10 year plan and I like to focus on where we're going and and sort of how we're going to how we're going to deal with the future that's in front of us. But before they can deal with the future, they've got to deal with the, the immediate uh, uh, problem of of not only this coming year, which is the us usual budget cycle, but they've also got um, <clears throat> a fairly big supplemental uh, that's facing that, that's staring them in the face. And they've got to deal with both of those before we can. We, we can really sort of focus on the future, which is where a lot, most of our attention should be on how we're going to get through, uh, how, how we're going to adjust to these, to these new times now that we've hit the wall. The supplemental, uh, depending upon how you break it down, is, is, is about a billion dollars, uh, the, the way the governor's proposed it. Uh, roughly 90 million of that is supplemental uh, uh, money for the wildfire, wildfire suppression accounts to make up for uh, the unprecedented 2019 wildfire season we had to backfill right. those accounts. Right. Uh, about 120 million of that is uh, for Medicaid. Uh, we forecast the the, the budget uh, that was approved last year forecast uh, savings in Medicaid that didn't come about. It actually short funded Medicaid. It, 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 even assuming those savings, it didn't provide enough funds for Medicaid. That that comes back to haunt you in the supplemental. And so it's about 120 million uh, for that. So that's about 210 million, just those two. And then the governor, uh, as he said he would, uh, proposes in the supplemental to fund the remainder of the statutory PFD uh, that got short funded last year. 
Uh, and that's another eight hundred million dollars. So that's that's a billion dollars. And keep in mind that we've got roughly a little over two billion dollars in the CBR. That's a billion dollars in uh, additional uh, uh, supplemental funding uh, for the FY20 budget before you even start thinking about the about next year's budget. That's a that's a I mean a billion dollars is a huge number. It is it is a record number. Even even if you take away the eight hundred million dollars in the PFD supplemental, uh, the two hundred million the two hundred million dollars uh, in, uh, in in wildfire suppression and in supplemental Medicaid are are big in and of themselves. Uh, the governor proposes proposes to fund that out of an ad, out of an additional draw from the ERA that would put us over uh, the the ceiling uh, that was set by the legislature in SB twenty six. Uh, that's essentially a tax on future Alaskans uh, by taking money out of the permanent fund, um, additional money out of the permanent fund that otherwise is earning, that, that, that has earning potential, the earnings base, the investment base going forward. Taking that money out to pay for uh, the bills of current Alaskans, it's essentially a tax on future Alaskans. So it's, it's I mean, the supplemental in and of itself. Is uh, is huge. Well, and uh, okay, let me ask you a question because part of that, you know, part of that uh, billion dollars that you're talking about is a fulfillment of uh, you know what Dunleavy is saying is is a fulfillment of the statutory obligation to pay the full PFD. So, do you see that still as a tax on future Alaskans if they are supposed to be following the law and uh, and taking that because the money is still in the ERA regardless of whether they pulled it or not. Uh, by giving us only sixteen hundred instead of thirty one hundred, the remaining fourteen hundred and change is still, you know, per person is still in the earnings reserve account. Do you still see that as a tax on future Alaska? Yeah, because it's being funded. It's being funded by an excess ERA draw. It's being funded by uh, an additional amount uh, over and above the real rate of return that the ERA is funded. The way the way. It, the way it would avoid being a tax on future Alaskans is if is if either we cut back on spending in the current year to be able to accommodate that additional amount within the within the 5.25 the er the 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 draw off on the real rate of return, or we re, or or we reduce spending, or we funded it uh, funded the the total spending package through a tax on current current Alaskans. Uh, by having some sort of, of tax on current Alaskans, so yeah, it's a it's a tax on future Alaskans because it's an amount above um, uh, above the uh, the the real rate of return, the the the, the earnings draw set by uh, set by SB twenty six. Okay, all right. Well, let's continue. I mean, I, I'm. You know, I'm I'm looking at this and thinking. I mean, they should have been following the law to begin with, and I agree that they should be reducing the size and scope of government to match that. Um, I mean, I think at some point, you know, I my thought on this is that there's really only one way to stop this. That we basically have to hit the wall because there's just no fiscal discipline. There's no way to do it as long as there's some kind of pot of money to draw from. This legislature, past legislatures, future legislatures are going to have the same problem that they're that they've you know that we've had for 45 years in this state, which is an addiction to OPM, which is other people's money, and they just they they they're just going to spend it until there's nothing left, and then they're going to have to face the reality that they either have to cut or find new revenues, and uh, and and I don't think that there's a stomach in the state of Alaska for the people to find new revenue. So maybe then and only then will we actually come back to a more sustainable budget. Yeah. And, and another way, Michael, I mean, to go back to the supplemental for just a second, another way to look at this is what's a tax on future Alaskans is to pay for the excess spending, uh, the spending over and above um, the statutory, the, 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 the amount that, that could have been spent if you took the statutory dividend uh, out of the beginning. Um and, and so that tax on future Alaskans is there to pay for the additional spending, not necessarily to pay for uh, the, the supplemental dividend. It, but, but it is, how, however you assign the revenues, uh, taking more than the real rate of return from the permanent fund uh, is taking more than this generation's share, and it is reducing the investment base for future generations. Uh, and, and is a tax on future Alaskans. So it, it doesn't, I'm not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to say we're taxing future Alaskans to pay the current PFD. What we're taxing future Alaskans to, for, for the revenue necessary to pay for current spending 
um, uh, over and above what this generation is contributing. So the supplemental is huge, and obviously, you know, three hundred million was going to be one of the largest supplementals in history. If we go all the way up towards that billion dollar mark, it will definitely be the largest supplemental in history. But the chances of this actually passing the way it is. Uh, I think is pretty slim because there obviously is no appetite in the legislature to follow the law and to pay that statutory dividend. Uh, and so it realistically, it will probably be down in the 300 million range. Yeah, I think that's right. You've got to pay Medicaid and you've got to pay, you've got to uh, uh, pay for the, for the excess fi uh, fire costs. Uh, and that's about 210 million between, between those two. So I think that's, I think that's likely where we, where we show up. There may be some additional costs that creep out uh, uh, from underneath the rug uh, by the time the supplemental is done. But we're roughly in the 200 to $250 million range uh, for supplementals before you get to the, before you get to the PFD. A, a huge number. Uh, and it's got to come from someplace. And if it doesn't come from an excess P, uh, ERA draw, then it's going to have to come from the CBR. Um, and that just hastens the, 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 the wall. I mean, just it, it makes the wall even more uh, real right in front of us. Right. So that's the supplemental. Now we move on in number two to the actual budget itself, which is huge. I mean, it, it, it it's it's huge and not, and not in the fact that the budget itself is huge. It's a big budget, but it's huge in the fact that just a couple months ago, the governor was talking about continuing to cut. And what we essentially have here is a flat budget uh, with some increases in certain departments, slight decreases in other departments, but overall, essentially, just maintaining the current rate and uh, the increase of the 110 million, he was able to eat that in in part. But essentially, a flat budget for the current year, which is, like I said, 180 degrees different than what we were talking about just 90 days ago with the governor. Yeah, and we don't have the revenue to pay for it. I mean, to to cut to the chase, we we, we don't have enough money to pay for uh, a flat budget. Uh, the the traditional revenues. Uh, the, uh, the oil uh, income from oil, uh, plus the other associated taxes that we have, about a half billion dollars in other taxes that we have, uh, adds up to about $2 billion. Um, and when you add in uh, uh, the leftover amount, uh, if, you, if you assume the statutory PFD and you assume SB 26, the limits of the SB 26 draw uh, to this generation share, uh, that adds in uh, roughly another uh, billion dollars. So we got about $3 billion. We got about $3 billion, a little over $3 billion in traditional revenues plus uh, the, the portion of the, of the POMV draw after payment of the statutory PFD. $3 billion in, in traditional revenues and the flat funding, the, the business as is, uh, is about a four point six billion dollar budget. So you've got you've got a one point five billion dollar hole um, in revenues. That's more than a quarter uh, of of spending, uh, uh, substantially more than a quarter of spending. About a third of spending uh, is a deficit. Um, it, in, and we're talking about this immediate next year. We're not talking about some year down down the road in the future as we right. used to be. We're talking about this immediate next year. You got about a billion and a half uh, of a hole. And and to close that, the only place to go to close that uh, is is the CBR, which has about two billion dollars left in it. So you're going to use up about three quarters of the remaining amount of the CBR uh, to close that hole. You're going to have you're, and and to, and to pick up from the supplemental. If you don't do an excess ERA draw, you're going to have used about two hundred and fifty million dollars um, of that CBR to close the the supplemental. Um, and so you've, that'll leave you with about a billion seven five, and and you're going to use a billion and a half of that to close uh, the FY 2021 uh, 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 deficit. Essentially, what we're facing, what the, what the legislature is facing, without doing anything else, uh, is is sort of draining out the rest of the CBR uh, to fill uh, next year's budget. Well, and that's the thing. The, I thought one of the most important. Uh... I thought one of the most important uh, uh, images in the governor's uh, budget summary 
was the budget reserve balances, which is on, uh, I don't know, was it page three? It's one of the first couple pages in the summary of the budget. And you look at this piece, and I'm putting it up on the screen right now, and you just look at this. You know, starting in 2013, we had over $16 billion in budget reserves, meaning in our savings accounts. And then you just see it, and it just plummets over the course of, of three years, uh, you know, we're down to less than less than half that. And then by this last year, we're down to just a shade over two billion dollars in reserves. And if we move forward on this estimated in 2021, there's going to be less than half a billion dollars left in the savings accounts by the time it's all said and done, which means the constitutional budget reserve is required to have about about ten billion dollars in it. It means that we're not only are we short I mean, and, and still owe the Constitutional Budget Reserve about $9.5 billion, we're, there's going to be nothing left. By 2022, there's nothing on the graph. It's empty, uh, which means there is no more going to the well to draw more money out and be able to live in the way we've been living. That's right. That, we hit the wall. I mean, the, the, after we'll discuss this in the next segment, but after you get beyond 2021, the world is very bleak. The world basically is... We're going to tax somebody, um, and it's just a question of who's going to get taxed. Um, and it's a and it's a it's a very bleak world. But this year, this year is bleak in and of itself because because we are hitting the wall. Draining the draining the CBR um, is is a huge deal. Uh, back in '86, we had a we had an episode up at up at. Uh, up at Prudhoe that resulted in shutting in Prudhoe for a period of time, a few days, ultimately the way, the way we finally got it worked out. Right. But, but that caused panic because, because we didn't have, I mean, if Prudhoe gets shut in, we don't have those oil revenues, those daily oil revenues uh, available to the state or monthly oil revenues when the tax is paid um, available to the state. And that caused a cash crisis in, in 86. Well, the, at least in '86, we still had a CBR uh, to go to. Not as not as big as as it should have been. We were still we'd still drawn it down some, but we still had a CBR to go to. If we take if we take the CBR down to zero, which is what the projections are uh, on our current plan, we have nothing to go to. Uh, if we had a, if we have an event that interrupts taps or or some event on the North Slope that interrupts oil flow. Michael Beck says in the chat room, "Well, this puts one in the Christmas spirit." Yes. <laughs> I mean, I saw this and I looked at this and I thought, okay. Um, I mean, I was I was a little I was a little shocked, quite honestly, uh, and uh, because you know we had just spoken with the governor and I don't think it was probably maybe three or four weeks before the budget came out was the last time we spoke with the governor and he had said, yeah, we're still we're still on track to you know make Alaska live within its means and everything else and. Then I saw this. And so, Brad, you know, I'm trying to be optimistic. I'm trying to be, you know, a little Pollyanna-ish on this. And I'm trying to think, is there a deeper game here? Is the governor trying to make the legislature, you know, basically own everything uh, for this because this is an election year? Does he make them own everything? And then do you see a deeper game where he comes back later on and, you know, whips out the red pen at the end of the session and and does his thing there. Is that is that a possibility, or is that am I am I reading way too much into this in your mind? Well, here here's the deal. The governor the governor's trying. He tried last year to start a conversation. I mean, the governor the governor's looking at these numbers and and he's reacting to it the same way that anybody should when they look at these numbers. Oh hell, we've hit the wall, and so we need to have a conversation with Alaskans about what we're going to do. How are we going to? Are we going to pay for this in some fashion, or are we going to? Are we going to cut it back? The governor tried to start the conversation last year with we're going to cut it back. And Michael, here's here's the important thing that happened last year. He couldn't get 16. He couldn't get 16 to back him up on those cuts. So. When you're in, you're dealing with the same legislature. We haven't had an election since then. We've had a couple. We've had the death and 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 the elevation of one representative to a senator, and then the naming of a new representative. But that's the only change we've had. If you couldn't get 16 last year, why? Would, what what gives you any hope of going down that path this year? Right. And so what he what he's doing this year is trying to start the conversation a different way, saying, okay, you want to spend this money? Here's what happens. What happens is we drain the CBR, um, and and we're just flat out of money. 
at this point, folks. Um, and what do you want to do? Who, who are you going to tax? Are you going to tax the current generation uh, in terms of cutting the PFD to pay for it? Or, and, and that only lasts a few years, on, at, given, the, given the trajectory that we're on. Uh, are you going to tax future generations by taking, it, uh, by taking excess draws out of the ERA? Or are you going to tax the current generation on a more, in a more equitable way? Or after those three, or are we going to cut it? That's really the, that's really the four things that he's got to, that he's got to lay on the table. Right. Either tax, either tax somebody, which is the first three or cut it. Tried to start it last year by saying, okay, I want to cut. Couldn't get 16 to back him up. So this year he's saying, okay, we're going to flat it, flat fund it, huge deficits, Huge uh, CBR draws until the CBR is gone, uh, and then we've got to and then we've got to do something. And so he's trying to start the conversation. He's trying to start the same conversation, but a different way. Right. Well, and he doesn't sugarcoat it. I mean, it's right there in, like I said, for the, page three of the summary after the cover page and the and the table of contents is this is this graph that I just showed, which basically says, hey. By 2021, 2022, we are out of money, and there is nothing left. What do you want? It's balls in your court. What do you want to do now? This would be a different conversation this year if he'd had 16 to back him up last year. This would be a different conversation because we'd be in year two of, of I'm going to cut. I'm going to keep cutting. 16 are there to back me up. We're going to keep going down this road. It would be a different conversation. But he didn't have the 16 last year. Um, and so we're in this conversation. Now, maybe in the course of this conversation, 16 raise their hands and say, look, we're not going to tax any 16 say we're not going to tax anybody. We're going to back you up on cuts. Let's take it down. Maybe that happens. Um, and then at the end of the year, I'm, I think this governor would be fully prepared to go ahead and veto it down, knowing he had 16 behind him. But if you can't get 16 last year when we had this conversation, there's 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 no confidence you're going to get them this year. Uh, you're going to find 16 this year. So you 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 got to go to you got to go to Plan B. I mean, if if Plan A, which is cuts, if you can't get the 16 you need to do the cuts, you got to go to Plan B, which is we're going to need revenues, folks. And basically, the governor's thrown up his hands and said, "I'm willing to take it take it out of the CBR for a couple of years, but then we got this huge blank." Um, and we need to have a conversation about how we're going to fill that. I'm wondering what the reaction was. It seemed like the reaction from around the state, especially from those legislators who I think were expecting another, you know, they were expecting another fight. They were expecting another big cut. Uh, I think it was almost like a stutter step, like, uh, uh, what? Oh, man. Uh, maybe it is ball in their court. Maybe this is genius. I don't know. I will be honest. My initial reaction was disappointment. But as I've kind of percolated on it and thought about it, um, I don't know. Maybe maybe it is genius because, again, I think there was a little bit of a stutter step around the state uh, as other I think legislators, especially those in opposition to the governor, were expecting more cuts. And now all of a sudden their 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 game plan, their strategy is kind of out the window and they kind of realize that the ball's in their court. Yeah. So so the governor's the governor comes to this decision with this background, I, as I as I just said during the break. The biggest event to me last year during the last session was the governor couldn't get 16 to back him up on his vetoes. That was the, that was the big event. So the governor's coming to this, this process by saying, okay, I couldn't get 16 last year to back me up on vetoes. If I, if I put cuts out there again, I'm just going to get pummeled. And at the end of the day, I don't have 16 to back me up. I've got to start this conversation somehow. So I can see I can see the, the the logic that says okay we're going to start we're going to start the conversation differently this year. This is what this is what you're telling me you want in terms of continued spending. I'm telling you we don't have the revenues to support it. I'm telling you that we drain savings uh, uh, quickly uh, in one year uh, uh, trying to go down that road. Uh, and I'm telling you that you're going to have to raise revenues in some fashion. If you don't want to cut, you're going to have to raise new revenues in some fashion. You're either going to ha have to continue taxing the, the, the middle and lower income of Alaska families through PFD cuts. You're going to have to tax future generations through excess ERA draws, or you're going to have to finally confront taxing the current generation equitably. Uh, you're going to have to confront that situation. In the, in, I can see the governor coming 
to his mind in saying that. And and you didn't like the way we started the conversation last year with the cuts. Fine. Let's start it. Let's start it by talking about revenues um, and new revenues and what and what you as the legislature and you as Alaskans are prepared to do in terms of new revenues. And that's exactly when you look at the 10 year plan, that's exactly what this budget does. It says we don't have enough money to do this, folks. We will go broke. Uh, we will run out of current of current revenue sources. We will run out of savings. We will be broke and we will have to have new revenues to keep going down this path. Now, that's what you want. All right. Here's the three choices. One is uh, uh, continue to tax middle and lower income Alaska families to pay for it through PFD cuts. The second is to tax future generations through ERA, uh, excess ERA draws. Or the third is to tax current Alaskans more gen uh, uh, more equitably through some form of, of other other tax approach. Um, and maybe in that conversation, people finally wake up and said, oh, shit, we're going to have to pay taxes. Wait, <laughs> we want spending cuts. And maybe we back into that conversation you wanted to have last year. But since he didn't have 16 to back him up last year, I can I can easily see why he doesn't want to start down this road again again this year. Right. Uh, Brad Keithley, our guest, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Uh, we are down to the last uh, six minutes or here. So, Brad, what uh, what do we have? Do you want to keep on this? Or you want to move on to number three? No, let, let's I, I want to talk about the 10 year plan for a second, because if anybody everybody should have read the 10 year plan <laughs> should be required reading. But if anybody hasn't read the 10 year plan, uh, they need to go read the 10 year plan. This to me is the most important document um, uh, in the entire budget package. I know we can fight about about spending on this or spending on that this year or supplemental or that supplemental, but the 10 year plan tells you uh, what the future is. And, and the 10 year plan tells you that we, that we run, we, we run through the CBR virtually run through the CBR this year. And then we have, even if, even the, the, the 10 year page 13 of the 10 year plan just shows sort of a basic before we, we get into the scenarios shows you a basic, uh, situation and it says even if we hold agency operations exactly flat uh, for it, at 2021, we spend 3.9 billion dollars in 2021 for agency operations. We spend 3.9 billion dollars in 2030. We don't change it. We don't e increase it at all. Even if we do that, um, we are running billion plus uh, deficit, billion dollar plus deficits um, uh, every year. Uh, from now until until the end of the decade, from now until 2030. I mean, I talk a lot about federal budgets, um, and and there we're we're talking about trillion dollar plus deficits, which are huge things. Here we're talking about a billion dollar plus deficit, which is an equally huge thing. It's it's more than 25 percent of the budget, roughly 30 30 a third of the budget will be coming. It will be in deficit uh, from here to the end of the decade. That's a critically that's even if we get through this year somehow by by drawing down the CBR, we have to understand we're at the end of the road. There is no more savings to draw from. It, it will be a tax on somebody uh, uh, if we keep if we keep going down the current road. And and either we a we need to talk about who we're going to tax, who's going to pay for this additional spending, or we need to seriously this year talk about talk about the cuts uh, the cuts approach um, but this this document just just lays it out and says under any scenario under any scenario uh, we are at uh, we're facing billion dollar plus uh, deficits uh, uh, going forward uh, Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. The 10-year plan, as you said, should be required reading. It should be the Bible because I think what we've got going on here is the same problem that we've had for 45 years in this state, lack of long-term vision. It seems like they're always thinking about next year, maybe the year after if you're lucky, but nobody's looking at the 10-year scale of where does this, you know, where does this kind of spending or revenue or whatever lead us? Where does it take us in 10 years? And I think that has been the fatal flaw in what's happened here in the state of Alaska. It, it, yeah, it's always been we can put it off till next year. We can put off the hard decisions till next year. We'll just take another chunk out of the CBR or at the beginning of this, we'll just, we'll, we'll just take another chunk out of the out of the SBR. Since 2016, we'll just take a chunk out of out of the PFD. Uh, and we'll and we'll sort of we'll sort of just keep this keep this game going, keep the good times rolling. We're done. I we once we run through the CBR as as 
as we are projected to do this year, if we don't if we don't confront the issue this year, once we run through the CBR, we're done. There's no other pocket of money uh, to go to other than taxing somebody, other than PFD cuts, which tax middle and lower income Alaska families, other than uh, excess ERA draws, which tax future generations, or uh, other, uh, through a, a more equitable means of taxing taxing the current generation. One more thing on 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 the on the uh, ten year plan before we go. There are five scenarios in there uh, that are that are hugely important and and important uh, important reading. The, four of them were in last year's ten year plan. The fifth is a new one um, and is called the balanced approach. And I highly recommend. Uh, people taking the time to walk through the fifth. The fifth is basically um, a plan that says we're going to approach the future deficit sort of a third, a third, a third, a third in terms of spending cuts, <coughs> a third in terms of, of reformulating the PFD to uh, POMV 5050, and a third through uh, through new taxes. Uh, it's basically an approach that, that I think is probably the least uh, harmful to the state overall in terms of economic impact, the most equitable in terms of spreading the, uh, spreading the, uh, spreading the impact among Alaskans and non-residents because new taxes would, uh, would, would pick up non-residents. Um, and I think, it's, I think it is a balanced approach. It's a new approach in this 10-year in this, uh, plan and one I think Alaskans ought to focus on. You're not not worked up about this at all, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's 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 the end game. We, fi- we you and I've been talking about it. I've been talking about it. Everybody's been ta- a lot of people have been talking about it since 2012, 2013. We're here. We finally hit the wall. We're here, and and we need to wake up to it. I mean, if we paper over this coming year with a with just one more CBR draw, we've put ourselves as a state in a world of hurt going forward if we have a disruption on taps if we have an earthquake that takes earthquake that takes out taps for a for an extended period of time we are in a world of hurt um and and we need to we we need to focus on that we need to understand that uh because the legislature is going to have to make some tough decisions this year the governor is going to have to make some tough decisions we essentially rejected cuts only last year um and and we're we're the, the question is not only how are we going to fund the state this year, but how are we going to fund the state going forward? This is it. And, and yeah, I guess I do get a little worked up about it. But, you know, it, you, for those who have seen this coming for the last 10 years, it is, it is a horrendous event that we've got here and we've not solved it. Well, and, and as, I've, as I've said and what, as I said earlier in the last break, I really think that that's, <laughs> this is where we had to come because obviously there was no political will to fix this. I mean, it was like it was. I mean, I, I I keep saying it over the years, but it's like the addict who just can't who just can't admit that there's a problem, and then they finally say, okay, they they hit the bottom of the you know rock bottom, and then they're like, then they could acknowledge it. That's where we're at. I mean, we are we have addicts who just can't admit it that they have a problem, but now it's staring them in the face, and there is no other solution. It has to. This is where we had to come to make all this stuff happen. Well, we're here. I mean, if it's where we had to come to make it happen, yeah. we've, we've we've arrived here uh, be, because we're we're down to the last. Uh, you know, you're we're 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 looking at the bottom of the well uh, in terms of the CBR. The SBR is gone, um, and 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 revenues. The the oil price recovery. You know, hundred and twenty dollar oil didn't come back. The cavalry didn't didn't come over the hill, um, and so we're there. Uh, and and we have to confront the fact we're there. Last year, essentially, we were in another year of denial. And the fact the governor couldn't get 16 uh, was hugely disappointing uh, uh, last year to sort of face up to the fact that, that you know, that, that, that we were there. Uh, this year, we've got no choice. I mean, this year, this year, we either we either face up to it or we just leave future generations in, in a horrible situation with no uh, with no rainy day reserve to call on. And you sounded like you sounded a little suspicious when I said this is where we had to come. I mean, don't you agree that that's kind of that was the only solution at this point? Because literally nobody wanted to admit it, even those who were more you know conservative Republicans who I mean, like you said, we couldn't even get 16 last year. 
I mean, didn't don't you think that that was really the only solution at this point is that that was the only way that this thing was going to get solved is that we just basically had to have no other place to go. We had to back ourselves into a corner. I mean, you and I may have wanted it, but it seemed like nobody else did. Oh, boy. You know, back in 2015, I thought, you know, he, here's where we're going. Here's where we're going. We will wake up to this fact and, and we will we will. We will curb ourselves before we get to this point. I, I truly thought we would do that. I mean, I thought <laughs> in the election cycle of, of 2012, 2014, 2016, 2018, that we would that we would wake up to this fact. We didn't. And, and you know, looking back on it now, you can say now, now it's now, now I, I should say, yep, yep. We were headed toward this wall all the time. I should have been out playing tennis or something <laughs> instead of worrying about this stuff. <laughs> I could have just, I could have just should have, should have, could have, should have, would have just, you know, hung out there, waited for it to happen. Yeah. But, but we're here. I mean, we, we, we've gotten all the way here and this is, there's no fudge points left. There's no magic trove of money that somebody's stuffed away in a, in a blanket someplace that we can now go get uh, to use. We've, we've used up all of the corners. There will be a tax. The tax will be either on, and in, unless we cut, unless, you know, suddenly we have 16 that, that want to cut, but there will be a tax and the tax will. And the question now is the tax is the tax on middle and lower income Alaska families is it on future generations or is it going to be more equitably spread across across current Alaskans? Well, and I and like I said, um, I'm I'm I think that maybe just maybe, uh, you know, part of the plan is get to the end, show them all the problems show them that there are no other places to go that this is the this, this is the end of the rope you better tie the knot and hold on and then maybe he gets to uh, make those vetoes and have 16 back him up on it you know maybe somebody finally maybe somebody finally gets the message that you know your very special arts program is not going to make it this year or this go around that's you know cuz he tried it the other way he tried putting all this discussion on the beginning of the discussion, maybe now it needs to happen on the end of the discussion. Well, sixteen need to. I mean, the governor <clears throat> tried it by being in the lead, taking all taking all the arrows, taking all the all the the abuse that he took, um, being in the lead, saying this is the way we need to go. But when he looked around <laughs> at the end, there weren't sixteen there, um, and so he's tried it that way, folks. I mean, everybody wants to criticize him for not saying. Not not coming out with a cuts budget this year. He tried it. Yeah. Sixteen weren't there at the end. Yep. Uh, and and so now he's essentially saying, okay, this is what you said. The sixteen, you, I didn't get sixteen. You guys essentially are saying that you want to keep going down this road. Here's where the road leads us. Um, is that where you want to go? And if there's if there's a, 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 a an upswell of sixteen, <laughs> great. Um, but the governor's basically, I mean, the governor's attitude likely is I tried that last year. Brad, thanks so much. We're out of time. We're about 20 seconds out. Thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Michael, as always, thanks for having me. Well, that's a wrap for another week's edition of the weekly top three from Alaskans for sustainable budgets. Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube and SoundCloud pages and keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the Weekly Top 3.